when you're talking about life and love and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ chapter by chapter and verse by verse, life is one day at a time.com. Welcome to Life is One Day at a Time.com. I'm Minister Chestnut, and thank you for joining me again for another day of life and another day of love to live in his riches and glory. But first, I like to wish you grace, mercy, and peace. We're still coming out of a pandemic, and they're talking about something else is coming. But hey, 10,000 can fall to our left and 10,000 can fall to our right. But that coronavirus will not come by us in the name of Jesus. So stay tuned, stay in touch. Hey, we're going to be bringing it to you live each and every week. We're continuing in the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke. Now, we're getting to the point where we have, have determined that John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. John the Baptist grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the desert until his days of shorn into Israel. Now, we already uh, went through the, the format to find out that John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, was serving in the, in the temple in the, the term of Abiah. So we determined that John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. So let's pick it up in chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of S Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea into the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the lineage of David and he went to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife being great with child and so it was that while they were there and the days were accomplished that she should be delivered and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, everybody was coming into town to be taxed. So there was a lot of people there. There was no room in the inn, but hey, since Mary was with child, the innkeeper let him hang out in the barn. That's where you get the manger from. Then the swaddling clothes, that's another medical term that Luke uses, you know, and uh, we're getting to the point now where there's a shift in the scene. Jesus has been born. There's a bright star right above the spot where he is. And we're out in the country. And there were in the same country. Now this same country is side is to believe the where David was when he was feeding his father's sheep. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, 
the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round and about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring unto you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Now, like I said, when angels show up, you're supposed to get good tidings. Verse 11, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you that you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into the heaven, the shepherds said unto one another, let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came in with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, as they made known from abroad, saying which was told unto them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now, that was quite a scene. You know, another confirmation. I know you heard this song. I mean, uh, glory to God in the highest peace, goodwill toward men. It's all in a song, Christmas songs. We, we hear it every year. Goodwill and peace toward men. This is what we should be having. But if you turn on the news every day, you think you're living in a different world. Let's continue in the Gospel of Luke. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him into Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opened the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Now, that's quoted in Exodus Chapter 13, verse 2. This is when the, the children of Israel were, were delivered from out of Egypt. And these are some of the laws that God told them that every male that comes from the womb is dedicated to the Lord. They are his. And it, it, it included male, female, and beasts. God creates all. And uh, verse 24. And to offer a sacrifice according to that to which is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold... There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Now, he wasn't the only one. Joseph of Aramea, uh, he was waiting too. And it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the holy had seen the Lord's Christ. 
and it he came by the spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law it's when and after he's been circumcised and and he, he's been dedicated to the Lord because he's his he was his son verse 28 then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles and glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now, this is prophecy, prophecy over the child Jesus to his mother and father. This is like an, an assertion, another confirmation. Verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in and that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him of all them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now, Jesus is growing up. I want you to get this picture. He's been blessed. He's growing up, waxing strong like John the Baptist out in the desert. He's, he's get, getting to be about 12 years old now. Verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had filled, fulfilled the days as they, they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they supposed in him to have been in the company, and went a day's journey, about six miles, you know, away from uh, Jerusalem. And then they sought him along among their kinfolk and acquaintances, and they found him not. And they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting amidst the, of doctors, both hearing of them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why has thou thus dealt with us? You know, it's like, why didn't you tell us, Jay, you wasn't coming? 
And behold, thy father and I have sought for thee souring. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Don't you know that I must be about my father's business? And they were understood and not the stand which he spoke unto them. And he went down with them and came into Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom in stature, and in favor with God and man. Now, even though he thought he was grown at 12 years old, this is at the age of, of the custom of the Hebrews that they, uh, they, they knew the law, 12 years old, you know, you're about to be a man. But he was obedient. He honored his parents. And hey, he lives forever. Honoring your parents is the first promise that God gives us to have long life. That it will be well with you and you should live long upon this earth. So he was obedient. He went with his parents after they came back and found him and he grew strong with man and in favor of God. But we'll pick it up next week as we continue another episode of Life is One Day at a Time dot com covering Luke's Gospel. How hard is it for everyone everywhere to come together and pray? Stop, take a minute, pray, rejoice. Don't forget, life is one day at a time dot com comes on every week with Minister Chestnut live and in living color. So be there every week because Jesus is our rock.